I can't actually say against it because I don't know the evidence. And I don't know if he actually seen the evidence. Well, th there is an obvious answer that the angel was lying. The angels can't lie, and you agree. So what does that tell you? So it tells you it wasn't an angel. <laughs> Well, then what if it was an angel telling the truth? It's a demon, bro. Mohammed had a spiritual experience, but, you, but it wasn't of an angel okay, of light, it was a devil. That as fact. Where's your evidence for that? I'll give you my evidence for that. So, my evidence for that is in the Bible. The apostles but, teach... One second. The, evidence the apostles has to be teach... Accurate. The apostles teach... The apostles, the apostles teach... The apostles teach that even if an angel of light should teach another gospel apart from this, that we have teached that Christ was crucified, that Christ was risen from the dead, that Christ is coming again. If even an angel of light contradicts these things, that angel is accursed. It is cursed by God. And we call angels cursed by God demons. Now, all the evidence of history confirms that Jesus Christ was crucified. So why would there be any evidence to support a claim that was false, if it was indeed false? Evidence accumulates in favour of truths, not against them. That's why we use evidence in arguments all the time, in everyday matters. When you're arguing about whether you owe rent to your landlord, you use evidence. Why? Because we, evidence corresponds to facts and facts corresponds to truth, and truth corresponds to reality. So if evidence and evidence and evidence is all saying Jesus was crucified, and then Muhammad says Jesus wasn't crucified, we have to conclude that Muhammad is wrong and all the evidence is right. Go on, bro. Yes, um, my question is, obviously this is an English-speaking country. Yeah. For how long this has been an english -speaking? Uh, the Anglo-Saxons arrived probably around the 4th century AD. Um, they basically butchered the Celts for about a century, so I'd say from about the 5th, 6th century. Okay. So, you know the Bible? Yeah. Before 1611, yeah. what religion were you guys before? So, Christians have always been Christians. We are disciples of Christ, we follow Christ. No. Okay. So the Bible, KJV, yep. you got translated in 1611. Yep. So that's a that's that's history. We're talking. Yeah, 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 we're talking so facts. before yeah. 1611, yep. what was your book of choice? Brilliant. Now please note, brother, this is how you talk about history. You base it on facts. So the brother is right. 1611 is when King James, the first of England. Uh, published what became known as the King James Bible. It was actually originally King James VI of Scotland, but with the death of Queen Elizabeth, the two kingdoms became unified under the one monarch. Because King James was the son of Queen Mary, and Queen Mary was the daughter of King Henry VIII. What, before this time, there were other Bible translations like the Bishop's Translation. The, the Bishop's come, Bible. Come. That, that the, wouldn't the Bishop's, be coming from the, the Hebrew. The, the Bishop's Bible came before the, the King James translation, as did the Tyndale translation. But all of these translations have a, a, a history. They go back, and they go back to a guy called Desdiri Erasmus. Desdiri Erasmus was a Catholic uh, polyglot. He could speak about 13 languages. He was a studier of various different fields a history, culture, art, science, philosophy. He was a deeply intelligent man. And he made what was called the Novum Grecum, the, the, the Novum Grecum uh, Testament. Bible, so. uh, well, that doesn't matter, bro. I'm telling you history. Yeah, no, you wanted no, to know history? No. I'm telling you history. So Desdire Erasmus uh, underwent a, a attempt to translate the, the Latin Bible, which was the Vulgate, which was used by the Western Latin Church, into Greek. And he did this by using the earliest Greek manuscripts that he could find. And he produced a number of different revisions of this Novum Testament Grecum. 
So the German Bible, the first Bible translated into German by Martin Luther, was translated from Desdere Erasmus's first edition. But the, I don't remember. But the, the, the third edition of this Novum Testament Greco was the one that was used for Tyndale, and it was the one that was used for the King James Bible. Now, it's a beautiful work of English literature. It is an ornament to the English language. It is a masterful use of the English tongue. I'm very proud of it as an Englishman that I can hold up the King James Bible and say that the King James Bible is my book. However, it isn't the best translation. There are problems with the translation. There are better translations today more accurate translations, translations that had use of other textual manuscripts, Greek manuscripts, Latin manuscripts, Gothic manuscripts, um, early Slavonic manuscripts. Because when you're translating a work from one language into another, it's better to use multiple different sources to do that translation for a number of different reasons.